Y'all, men are absolutely protecting themselves and women cannot take it. Let's start here for a second, okay? And y'all like the video, share the video and subscribe, but we have to dive into this, okay? There are so many men of today that are aware of what they bring to the table, right? Whether that be financial security and stability, whether that be protection, whether that be love, whether that be guidance and help. And so with men having this realization of their value, of what they can contribute to a woman's life, they are being very strategic and wise with who they allow access to them in those ways. Okay. And what I have noticed personally is the more that a man has to lose, the more he is guarded as far as who he allows to have access to him in those ways. And dare I say that these men are also protecting themselves from women that they have actually married. Whoopsie. See, <clears throat> For so long, there have been a lot of women that felt like once I got through the door of marriage, good. I can coast. I can slack off. I can get over because, hey, I made it. It used to be a time to where once a woman got married, she felt like she made it. And now she can slack off and she can show the real her which oftentimes, and it's no shade, and salute to the women that do their jobs correctly. But a lot of the times, you know, women resort to being lazy. That's who they naturally were. They resort to being very selfish and entitled because that's who they naturally were. But to get through the door and get married, they would put on this front or this facade like, oh, I'm different. You know, I don't mind being submissive, which is what Jeannie Mai actually said, but we're going to leave that over there for now. I can't wait to have my husband to take care of everything for me and me just, you know, be a great support system to him and, you know, follow his leadership. They pretend to be that way just to get their foot in the door. And then once I get him to marry me, the whole bait and switch. But what do I keep telling you all? And again, y'all like this video, real talk. What do I keep telling you all? I keep telling you all that we are dealing with a new breed of men. No longer are these men just allowing women to be a part of their lives. And you are problematic you're disrespectful, you're neglectful, you're selfish, you're entitled, you're lazy. That's, that's not happening anymore. And I don't care if I did marry you, you will still get the boot. And since a lot of women are not uh, accustomed to men protecting themselves in this regard, a lot of them find out the hard way that yeah, it is a new breed of men and they're not playing around with their value, with what they are offering and bringing to the table. If you're not going to uphold your end of the bargain, you can go because this is not what I signed up for. I married you because you presented yourself to be somebody that was going to follow along with my program you present yourself to be somebody that was loving, caring, supportive, submissive. And so if you're not going to be on the type of time, you can go. Again, gone are the days where men just are settling just because. Oh, well, I married her already, so I might as well just stay. Oh, we got kids together, so I might as well just stay. That's dead. That's a wrap, honey. So, unfortunately, Jeannie Mai is one of those chicks that 
found out the hard way that we are dealing with a new breed of men to where they're not just sticking around just to stick around. They're not just giving up all of their perks and privileges to unworthy, undeserving females. Oh, no. I don't care if I married you. We can get a divorce with the quickness. And can I add this as well? And again, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Men are also going into marriages protecting themselves because let's just be honest, you all, a lot of the times these chicks are not trustworthy. It is just something to try to capitalize off of, use a man for, use the men for, and then go on with your life. We talked about even in previous dope discussions about starter husbands. That's a thing. And men have caught on to that. And a lot of y'all may be asking like, what? what's a starter husband? Well, apparently a starter husband is when a woman seeks out a man that is very well off financially. Um, and she gets with him, gets him to marry her. And then she leaves him and takes half, if not all of what he has built and earned. And then once she um, feels solidified enough and comfortable enough with the money that she was able to take away from her starter husband and, you know, be more stable with, she goes on to another man to get him to marry her. And again, these men have to be, quote unquote, high value and well off. And they pretty much use it as a way to build wealth from the, for themselves. That's a thing, you all. Get a man that's wealthy or high value, that has a lot of money, status, you know, access, whatever, perks and benefits. Get him to marry you, then leave him and take all of what he has, if not half of it. Um live by yourself for a little bit, get yourself very comfortable and stable, then go and find you another sucker. That's really what they are doing. Find you another sucker that is well off, get him to marry you, then leave him. And then you're able to add on to what you already established off the previous man. And a lot of females will do this over and over again until they feel comfortable enough not to even get with a man at all. But what happens is those females come to realize that, hey, I actually do need a man. Money is not enough. Material possessions are not enough. But they find that out way too late. And by that time, they do want to actually love a man sincerely. And they do want to build with the man and be with the man. A lot of the men don't trust them because look at your track record. You have a track record of starter husbands. So, yeah, we're dealing with that. And since that has been the norm for so long, a lot of guys caught on to that. And they're like, oh, yeah, so if I do get married, best believe there will be a prenuptial agreement. And that's exactly what Jeezy did in the Jeannie Mai situation. See, gone are the days where men are just taking your word on face value. Gone, gone are the days where men are just trusting what you're doing right now. No, I don't know. And like I said, Jeannie Ma, she presented and pretended very well to the point to where, you know, she had me fooled even. She was going around talking about, oh, I can't wait to be submissive and, you know, I allow my man to lead and I can't wait to do this and do that. Like she really played up a good role. And even with her still playing up that good role, Jeezy was like, yeah, but I'm going to still need you to sign these papers, though. And good for him. Because come to find out, Jeannie Mai was exactly the type of chick that you need to run from. But let's go ahead and get into it, you all. I want to get into this article because I thought that this was very interesting that Jeannie Mai was now trying to plead with the judge to, you know, just dismiss Jeezy's prenuptial agreement, right? 
And to me, it's given that Jeannie is grasping at straws and she's trying to do whatever she can to try to capitalize off of the situation. She knows that Jeezy was a good husband. She knows that Jeezy was a good man and she didn't uphold her end of the bargain. She knows that Jeezy has valid reasons for wanting to divorce her and leave her. And since she understands now that he's serious about leaving her behind, now she's trying to hit him where it, where it hurts. This is why I really believe that Jeannie Ma is very desperate and grasping at straws. And again, you all, like this video, share this video, and subscribe. This is you, you got to share this because it needs to be utilized as a cautionary tale to all of these women out here that it's a new breed of men. You either come correct or reject. Jeannie Mai did the old switcheroo to where she played up a good role in facade just to get married because Jeezy is a, a man of means right he seems to be a man that is successful you know the whole nine everything that a woman is looking for we can pretty much come to the conclusion of you know maybe that's what jeezy is which is why Jeannie Mai wanted to marry him in the first place okay and once she was able to get into the door and get him to marry her then that's when she felt safe she felt like, yeah, now I can be myself. Now I can go ahead and unleash because, hey, I was able to snag the bag. He's not going to leave me. You know what I mean? He's not going to go anywhere. But again, you are new breed of men. They will leave you. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care that y'all are married. They don't care that you have children. Like, no. Peace over everything. Okay? Protecting myself over everything. Like, that's what we're dealing with. So she thought wrong. She thought that, hey, I can just get in the door and then I'll have all access and I'll be able to just go ahead and do whatever I want because by that time, it's already a, a done deal and surely he'll just, you know, coast with it and deal with it, right? Because that's what I'm used to men doing. We're used to men just dealing with it. We're not used to this new breed at all. But she thought that she would get over. She thought that Jeezy would just continue to give her a pass, and he didn't. And at first, I believed that she thought maybe he was bluffing when he was like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, head on out if you don't change your behavior. But she kept on. And then once she saw that he was really serious, it was like, hold on. I'm getting ready to lose my husband. I'm getting ready to, to lose my provider, my protector. Let me save my marriage. Right? That was the initial route that Jeannie Ma was taking. Oh, I need to uh, save my marriage. So let me go ahead and do what a wife is supposed to do. It's very funny how it goes from, you know, oh, I need to save my marriage to now begging the, the judge to throw out the prenuptial because you want a bag now that you know he's really serious about leaving you. That's what gives it away to me that Jeezy was doing what he was supposed to do as a man because initially she wanted to save her marriage. Then on top of that, when she really figured out like, damn, like he's really not buying this. Because again, you all, this new breed of men, they'll give you opportunities to clean it up. But after a while, it's like, no. And I'm pretty sure Jeezy gave her opportunities to get it together, you know. But she didn't. Or it was just entirely too late. And so then it went from, oh, I want to save my marriage to, oh, he's really done with me. Oh, well, since he's really done with me, well, I'll just say he cheated on me. Because I know that in the prenuptial agreement, it said that if he cheated on me, that I can throw out the prenup. She got desperate. She got real desperate. Men are protecting themselves from females like you.
You thought he would just go along with your flow. He didn't. And now you found out the hard way. But now it's looking like the cheating allegation didn't stick. So now we have Jeannie Mai talking about, oh, well, can you just please throw out the prenuptial agreement? Because I didn't get an opportunity to thoroughly read through the prenuptial agreement. And so I don't know what I signed. Too bad, so sad, ma'am. You should have did your due diligence. You were so thirsty to try to manipulate and finesse that you end up playing yourself. Because like I said, it's a new time, new breed. The men are protecting themselves and y'all can't handle it. Y'all are getting real desperate. Jeannie Ma is getting very desperate because she now knows and sees that she was dealing with a man that was about protecting himself. She was dealing with a man that was wise and intelligent, that was thinking 10 steps ahead of her. We're not used to dealing with men like that. So yeah, very funny, Jeannie. Then now you're begging and pleading with the judge to throw out to, to throw out the prenuptial agreement that you didn't read, yet you were just trying to use a tactic that was given to you by way of the prenuptial agreement that you didn't read. And so I'm just a little bit confused. If you didn't go through the prenup, how did you know that it was a clause in the prenup that had a stipulation regarding infidelity. So clearly you, you read it. You just thought that you would get over. You just thought that he would never, you know, get rid of you. That's what it's given. But anyway, y'all, let's get into this. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. It says, Jeannie Mai, please don't enforce prenup. I didn't have enough time. Girl, please. Girl, please. You had plenty of time. You just thought that he would keep giving you time to F him over. That's what it was. It says, Jeannie Mize requesting the court hold off on enforcing the prenup with Jeezy, saying she didn't have enough time to review it before signing. Okay. The talk show host filed the request Thursday afternoon in Fulton County, Superior Court, asking the judge to either deny Jeezy's motion to enforce the prenup uh, or at least hold off on enforcing it until the parties can exchange info about it. So again, Jeannie, it's given that you're very desperate. You didn't know that you were dealing with a man that was calculated, that was going to protect himself, that was wise, okay, that was moving very strategically to ultimately make sure that he was solidified. You didn't know that. She didn't know that you all. And so now she's desperately trying to go through this prenup so that she can find a loophole. Oh, you're going to leave me for real? You're not just going to tolerate my nonsense? Okay, well, let me give me some more time to read through this prenup so I can find some kind of loophole that I can utilize to my benefit. Trash. Trash, trash, trash. Um, it goes on to say, in the docs obtained by TMZ, JM says the prenup process was so quick, they started negotiating just five days before she walked down the aisle. She doesn't think she was able to do her proper due diligence on the agreement. But Jeannie, that whose fault is that? Like seriously, whose fault is that, that you are in such a rush to try to finesse a man that you didn't want to do your due diligence? You didn't want to go through the fine print with a fine tooth comb to see what you were agreeing to, what you were signing up for. Let's take it a step further, Jeannie. How about you just should have been a good wife and none of this would have been transpiring? You should have been implementing everything that you swore up and down you couldn't wait to do. Oh, I can't wait to be submissive. I can't wait to just allow my man to lead and take charge. I can't wait. Had you done your part, Jeannie, you wouldn't have to sit down and do all of this rushing. Because now you're desperate to try to snag a bag because you thought you had already snagged it. Girl, if you don't go sit down, it is not his fault you were rushing, being young and dumb. And you're not even young, but we're going to shut up on that. 
It says, basically, she says she didn't go through Jeezy's financial disclosures with a fine tooth comb to make sure she was getting a fair deal. I'm sorry to keep pausing y'all, but this is the problem. The problem with marriage today is we're not going through with marriage on good faith. We're not going through with marriage being sincere, being authentic, being genuine, building on things that are healthy of substance. Like, why are we even going into a marriage talking about, oh, I need to make sure, you know, I'm able to have a good deal when I leave you. You know what I'm saying? Now, on the man's part, I'm going to be honest, though. I understand why men are doing that now, right? I got to be real, right? While I don't like that we do have to go into our marriages, you know, thinking about the worst case scenarios and thinking about, well, how can I have a leg up over you know, this person that I'm supposed to be spending the rest of my life with. Why well, I don't like that. I can't understand men, you know, implementing things like prenups and, you know, different paperwork and agreements going into marriage because for so long, men have been going through marriage blindly, you know, thinking that this woman was the right woman, thinking that he could trust her, you know, having pure intentions, having a pure heart. And then lo and behold, you know, he was just a starter husband for her. And now, you know, he's looking stupid. So I understand why men are doing it. But, you know, when it comes to, in general, how I feel about us really going into marriages, kind of like, like business sharks. Like, I, I kind of, I don't like that. I don't like that. To me, we should have a lot more substance behind our marriages. We should take our marriages a lot more seriously. We should try to work through a lot of the things that we feel like, um, can be worked through, you know, we just throw marriage away like it's nothing, you know, so it, it really does cheapen the value of marriage when we are trying to find, you know, loopholes to, you know, finesse or get over. Like, I don't like that, but I do understand why, why men in particular have to go through with marriage with that in the forefront. Like, I got to make sure I'm protected because we're dealing with cutthroat women. Clearly, not only are these women cutthroat, but they're also very um, manipulative as far as them putting on these facades. They can pretend for a long time to be one way. And then once she feels like she has you and she's safe, you know, it's a whole switcheroo that catches you completely off guard. So I understand it, but I don't like it. I don't like it. And the mere fact alone that she's talking about, oh, I got to. I need more time so I can find me a loophole, you know, to, to see if I, I'm getting a fair deal out of this. Like, that's trash. You just should have been a good wife and you wouldn't have to have none of this on your plate to deal with. But let's continue, y'all. And again, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, But it says, basically, she says she didn't go through Jeezy's financial disclosures with a fine tooth comb. Uh, to make sure she was getting a fair deal. Saying the truncated window raises significant concerns about the adequacy and thoroughness of the due diligence process. But again, you did that to yourself, Jeannie Ma. You were in such a rush to try to finesse because you thought that he would be dumb and just go with your flow. Like, that's your problem. See, the issue is Jenny Ma felt like, oh, well, he's not going to leave me anyway, so I'll sign whatever. You know, I don't I don't have to read it, you know. But again, she didn't know she was dealing with a new breed of man, a new breed of man that was not playing with her. Um, it says she's also kind of calling out Jeezy here, saying that she has significant reservations about her ex's financial disclosures. Her legal team says the rapper only handed over one personal financial statement with the approximate taxes and insists she was legally entitled to a thorough examination of all documents. Jenny Mai, you're doing all of this way too late, ma'am. Way too late, ma'am. Way too late. We don't, we don't care. If you saw, if you saw all of these red flags, right? 
to where, hey, he's not disclosing all of his financials with me and he's not doing this and he's not doing that right. Well, that indicates to me that you were well aware of what you were dealing with, but you chose to overlook it because once again, you didn't know you were dealing with a new breed of man. Oh yeah, that's a red flag, but it's okay. I'll still be able to I'll still be able to capitalize and manipulate and control and get over because he's not going to do anything about it. He's not going to leave me, you know, so it doesn't even matter that this is a red flag or I didn't read over that. Like, it's not going to count anyway, because, yeah, he's not going to go anywhere. Girl, you got played. You played yourself and that makes it even worse. OK. Um, but it says we previously reported Jeezy filed for divorce from Jeannie back in September, saying the marriage is irretrievably broken. Uh, Jeezy seemingly implied he thinks Jeannie cheated on him and his music. What? Jeannie, you are the cheater. Okay, let me let me ask y'all this. Okay, but let's take a poll. Do you believe that Jenny Mai cheated on Jeezy? I'm putting at the poll right now. All right. Do you believe that Jenny Mai was the one that cheated on Jeezy? I would love to know. And if you're catching this on the replay, put a one in the chat if you believe that Jenny Mai cheated on Jeezy. And put a two in the chat if you don't believe that she did. Okay. But if you're live right now with us, take the poll. I would love to know if y'all believe that Jeannie was actually the one that cheated on Jeezy, yet she's trying to pin it on him so that she can get a bag out of it. We don't know. You know, these females do a lot of projecting. So take the poll, okay? But it says... um, he put it in his music that he thinks that Jeannie cheated on him. Lord have mercy. But it says, but she came out and denied any uh, suspected infidelity. It says, in fact, Jeannie took it a step further, outright suggesting he might have been the one who possibly cheated, claiming he pay through the nose for it per the prenup if he uh, if that did, in fact, turn out to be true. Anyway, the divorce is quickly getting messy, so stay tuned. Now, this is very alarming to me that, let me blow it up for you all. This is very alarming to me that she is saying that she suggested that Jeezy was the one that possibly cheated, and then she brings up he'd have to pay through the nose for it per the prenup. Now, Jeannie, if you did not take your time to go through this prenup and you're begging for the judge to extend everything so you can go through everything with a fine tooth comb and all of that, I, I just, I'm very confused as to how you know that he would have to pay through the nose per the prenup if you didn't read it. Again, Jeannie, it's giving you're desperate. It's giving you're just trying to find anything that can stick because you are finding out the hard way that you're dealing with a man that is serious about his peace, that's serious about protecting himself. That's a new breed of a man that is not a weakling, not a happy wife, happy life type of dude. Like we're not dealing with that. So for you to even bring up the fact that, hey, he would have to pay through the nose per the prenup if he cheated on me, that's a little bit suspicious because you are claiming that you didn't get to read the prenup. You're desperate, Jeannie. You played yourself, Jeannie. And so many women, unfortunately, go and make this grave, this grand and grave mistake as well. Stop it. Get some help. Stop thinking that these men are playing with y'all. They're protecting themselves at all costs. And it's not their fault that you thought that you would be the one to manipulate them and get over. No, that's not what we're dealing with. 
not what we're dealing with at all. But anyway, y'all like the video, share the video and subscribe. I look forward to seeing what you all have to say in the comments. Um, what do you think is going on? You know, is, is Jeannie Ma projecting? Uh, is Jeezy the one that is in the wrong and he's just playing his cards better than her? Y'all let me know, okay? But it's just looking real desperate to me. It's looking like Jeannie is just trying to throw anything at the wall to see what sticks. And since nothing is really working, now she's just looking for more time so she can find more loopholes. But I could be wrong. Anyway, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to see you all in the next dope discussion. And all, uh, please feel free to email me at demariepoet at gmail.com if you have any topic suggestions, any links. And if it's dope enough, we will turn it into a dope discussion. And also, you all... Uh, Feel free to hit that link down below in the comment section and the description box and sign up for our Patreon, okay? We go live over on Patreon every Wednesday at around 2 p.m. Central, and we get real raw, nitty, gritty, uncut, personal, and intimate. So you definitely want to pay your eight at the gate and come on in because it's going to be great, all right? But I'll see y'all later. Much love and peace to my crown heads. And ladies, remember, do not... I repeat, do not be like Jenny Mai. Peace.